A brand new battery has just been funded and announced here in Victoria in Australia. And bizarrely, no one is talking about it, but they should, because it's the first battery in the world to do something that, well, batteries should really be doing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. This is a really interesting renewable energy story. See, most batteries, in fact, all batteries in the world right now being deployed in electrical networks aren't actually used to provide system strength. Probably wondering what is that system strength? Well, I'll explain it in a minute. But first, this battery in Victoria is going to solve a key problem. There's an electrical network here, which has been a constant source of problems. Drop power drops out constantly. It's just a big issue. The only way they could solve this and the cheapest way they could do it was simply to install two massive batteries. One of the new giant batteries to be built in Victoria as part of the state's newly announced storage target is one of the most significant steps towards a truly 100% renewable grid. Not because of its size, but because of what it can do. Now, one of the key reasons that the detractors say that batteries are not part of the solution is that they don't provide system strength. And that's what the system here in Victoria needs in order to actually achieve its goals. Victoria, which is the second most populous state in Australia, is targeting 6.3 gigawatts of energy storage by 2035. 6.3 gigawatts. That is massive. I'm stoked to see that here because I live in Victoria. For those of you who have been watching the channel, I'm sure you already know that. But I live in Victoria and there's some really cool things happening here when it comes to renewable energy. The Victorian government announced funding for these two new batteries just last week. A 125 megawatt, 250 megawatt hour battery at Karangi to be built by Edify Energy near the town of Kerrang in northwest Victoria and a 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt hour battery at Tereng in the state's southwest to be built by FRV. The battery sizes are, well, they're massive, but they're not all that big compared to some of the other batteries being built in other parts of Australia. For example, there's some enormous batteries that are nearly three to four times that size going in in New South Wales. But what's most interesting and most impressive is how they're being used. And it's entirely novel, but it's critical to the way the world adapts to renewable energy and adapts to having energy storage where we have solar and wind generation, which obviously are transient. For example, solar, of course, will only work when it's sunny or at least during the day. And wind generation is generally at its strongest during the nighttime. Now, it's the Karangi battery that is the most interesting because it represents the first battery in the world, according to Renew Economy, that is contracted to provide system strength services to a key part of the, the Victorian grid. Its focus will be on the West Murray region, dubbed several years ago by Renew Economy as the rhombus of regret because of the shape of the local network and the massive congestion problems and delays that affected many new wind and solar projects. One of the solutions to that problem is to provide system strength to support the increase in renewables capacity. System strength is a key property that enables the grid to manage major disturbances. The significance of the Karangi battery is that it beat out competing offers from other traditional technologies. Synchronous condensers, which mimic the system strength services provided by the spinning machines of coal and gas generators, but without burning any fuel. Syncons, however, are essentially one trick ponies and batteries can do many different things at the same time, such as energy arbitrage, frequency control, and inertia. And the fact that the Australian energy market operator, along with the state government and the local network operator has recognized this is very significant. This will actually open the floodgates, I believe, to many countries around the world recognizing that batteries are not just good for one thing. A lot of different energy sources really are only good for one thing. But like we just said before, batteries can be used in many different situations. Energy arbitrage, frequency control, inertia, and of course, things just as simple as energy storage. 
So there's really a number of reasons there. I mean, four that I've just listed for why batteries are such a critical part of the world's energy future. In a head-to-head -head tender against synchronous condensers for these services, a battery came out on top, Edify Energy's head of energy markets, Andrew Shell told Renew Economy. This shows the market operator, the network operator, and the government have embraced the technology as a solution to provide these services to fix the current problems in the network. This is a really important project in the changing nature of the grid, Steele said. It means we will not be beholden to keep fossil fuel plants on the line just for system security. It enables us to manage the transition to truly 100% renewable systems that predominantly are inverter based. Now, I'm going to share that part again, the most important part there. It means we will not be beholden to keep fossil fuel plants online just for system security services. All the naysayers, the detractors of renewable energy are saying, we will need to keep fossil fuel plants online for that exact reason, system security. This here proves that that in fact is incorrect. It's just a blatant fallacy. The way the battery will operate will be unique. It will enter a contract with AEMO to provide its 125 megawatt capacity for system security purposes. When called upon, it will react in a matter of milliseconds so it will not need to draw on its two hours of storage. The capacity can still be used for other services such as energy arbitrage and frequency control. From a day-to-day -day market perspective, the dispatch won't look fundamentally different, they said. The battery will provide an intrinsic property, a background stability service. It is the mere presence of the battery with those properties in that region that allows the renewables hosting capacity of that network to increase and to maintain stability. AEMO has previously identified batteries with advanced inverters or grid forming inverters as the key to the transition to a renewable grid. In South Australia, it has dramatically reduced the need for gas generators to operate and provide system strength by installing a series of four syncons. But the significance of this deal with Edify in the future, we don't need synchrons. We can simply use batteries which can deliver multiple other services at the same time. The value of the contract released by the Victorian government is for 120 million Australian dollars over 20 years. That's around about 80 million US dollars. Isn't it amazing how battery technology is improving every year? Now, one of the ways we talk about on this channel how battery technology has improved is energy density, right? And costs have come down as a result of lithium ion phosphate batteries, but not just as a result of using lithium ion phosphate chemistries, but also as a result of massive production. Producing more is actually able to reduce costs. But the thing is, right, when we can use a battery for all these different purposes, this also means that fundamentally it's cheaper to use because we're saving in costs of installing other things that we no longer need. Batteries, my friends, are an incredible, amazing solution to the world's energy needs. And I've got to say, I'm excited to see this. This is really good news. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Bye-bye.